17-year-old Julian, boards a plane. She's accompanied by her mother, Maria, and both of them are nervous. <laughs> the Peruvian company has been in existence for less than a decade, and they've already had two crashes, the last of which occurred less than 18 months ago. But they have no other choice. Her high school graduation was last week, and they want to be home for Christmas. So against Julian's father's wishes, they board the flight, hoping it reaches the destination safely. For half an hour, the plane is on schedule. At 21,000 feet, they enter a storm. The turbulence starts off minuscule, then builds, a panic. Julian buckles her seatbelt. At this point, the pilots could turn back and have enough with their fuel reserves, but they fear the repercussion on a holiday flight. Against their better judgment, they press on. For the next 20 minutes, passengers endure the turbulence. What Julian sees outside of her window sends chills down her spine. Lightning strikes the right wing, and it's ripped away from the fuselage. <laughs> Julian wakes up in the dead of night. Gashes on the arms and legs. Immense pain. Her right eye is so swollen she can't see a thing out of it. Her collarbone sends a sharp signal to her mind. Probably broken. She unbuckles her seatbelt and tries standing up, but blood rushes from her head and again. She crawls through the wreckage. No one. She is weak, but she found candies and rainwater among the wreckage, and slowly they provide extra calories for her game plan. Her father is an outdoor enthusiast, and she remembers advice he had given her. Civilization lives near water. She aims to find a stream follow it downhill until hopefully it crosses path with a village. Her sandals provide no protection among the bending jungle floor. Eventually, she follows the water until it merges with a larger stream forward. She begins noticing a wiggling feeling under her skin. She tears at a gash and sees that her wound is filled with maggots. A fly had laid eggs inside when she was unconscious, and now she's scraping them out of her wound. But some are burrowed deep, and the pain is intolerable. And now she's having a one-on-one -on -one battle with the cold. After nearly four days of continual trekking, Julian hears a king vulture. She knows his call means there's decaying flesh nearby. She proceeds with caution, hoping among the dead is a survivor. But when she reaches the clearing, hope turns to dismay as she sees two seats have landed headfirst in the ground. She presses on. A glimpse of rescue. But the sound fades. She blends into the jungle floor, and the same routine happens eight more times over the following days. Each near miss, 
more devastating than the last. Without food and infected with sickness, Julian is on the verge of 24-7 hallucinations. When through the leaves, she spots an object. She runs up and presses her hand towards the shiny metal. Yeah, this is actually here. Touching the cool surface gives her a boost of adrenaline, and suddenly she's stronger than she's been in days. She notices a trail running through the leaves and drags herself along it until she uncovers. It's empty, but there's canisters of gasoline inside, so she lifts one up and pours it on her maggot-infested wound. According to the locals in the region, the Yamananja are pale and blonde demons that live in the water. And as four missionaries enter their fishing hut after a trip, what they see laying on their floor matches the description. But when Julian starts talking, all becomes clear. Within 24 hours, Julian is reunited with her father, who now has hope that his wife is still out there. For days, the searches continue, but by January 12th, her mother and all of the remaining bodies are accounted for. Theories have floated around as to how Julian survived a two mile high fall from the sky. One theory states that the row of chairs may have acted as a parachute. Another questions if the thunderstorm created an updraft, which slowed the fall. All in all, Flight 508 becomes Lanza Airlines' last flight. And Julian graduates in 1980, fulfilling the wish of her mother. Welcome to Stank. Okay, all right. I'm here to pitch Wilshire. There's only ever what? To maybe three people that will see your will, your lawyer, and whoever is in that will write. So on Wilshire, you can share your will before you die and get likes on it. Rejected. Hello, hi, my name is Bernard. I'm here to pitch Krill Share. It's a place where you can share pictures of Krill. What about other aquatic animals? Yeah, something cool, like a HR Krill. Why would you want to see pictures of sharks? Alright. I'm... Hi, I'm here to pitch Skillshare. It's an online learning platform. Can you share more? Sure, the first thousand people to use the link below get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, which gives you access to hundreds upon hundreds of different classes from video editing to drawing to pretty much anything you can think of. Sure. Hey, is the uh, is the food bar downstairs? Is that is that free? Can I? No, it's not. Just kidding. Grab what you wanted. Oh, 